Welcome America, man do I have something for you today. Have you ever had sushi before? Have you ever had sushi done like jambalaya, Cajun style? I'm gonna be showing you a sushi with a twist. When I started doing sushi, I actually did some research and I realized that sushi wasn't all about the raw stuff. It's literally whatever you wanna put in it. So I'm gonna be creating a jambalaya sushi roll. Chef Champion here to take you on a culinary journey I promise you've never been before. I'm here to help mold you, shape you, motivate you, and most importantly, inspire you into cooking like a champion. I'm Chef Champion, but my friends call me Ace. Welcome to the new age of culinary learning. Cook like a champion on this great station. So the first thing that you want to make sure that you do is you got your bamboo mat. You want to make sure that you wrap this tightly with some saran wrap and that way the rice doesn't seep into the actual bamboo shoots. So let's set that. So we'll go ahead and get our prep together. The sweet thing about jambalaya is it's just the same ingredients you would naturally put in actual jambalaya rice, only we're putting inside a sushi rice, just a little bit of a twist. So the first thing we want to do is turn our stove down. We're gonna turn that on probably about a high heat because we want that nice high saute sear. We're gonna add a little bit of this avocado oil. That's a little bit. All right. Now while that's getting hot, we'll go ahead and cut up our veggies. Always remember, proper way to hold the knife, three fingers tucked underneath the handle, index finger is actually on the blade, and your thumb is actually on the blade, making sure you grip the knife. So I know traditionally you would use unduly sausage, but I'm using some actual Polish sausage, which I really like. Um, I have some friends over at Nooski's. They uh, provided me with some of this delicious sausage. So what you wanna do is just slice it in half once, and then we're actually gonna slice this on a bias for presentation. Always remember to slide the knife backward, and then just kinda moving forward, just like so. So then now you actually have nice, long um, strips of the actual sausage. We're gonna go ahead and throw that right into our skillet. Mm -hmm. And you always wanna add in the sausage first because you wanna go at what takes the longest and then go back and add what doesn't take the longest towards the end. Give that a nice little toss. So now the second thing that takes the longest is your actual bell pepper. So you're just gonna put my hand down there like so, so that it's nice and flat and I'm actually just gonna drag the knife and then just go forward. So essentially my motion is always just that nice rocking motion. And once I have all that sliced, all you have to do is just turn it. So really when you're getting diced, you slice it first, turn it at a 90 degree angle, slice it again, and magically you have diced. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but as you see in my left hand, I have what they call the claw. My fingertips are curled underneath it, why? Because fingertips are good, you guys. I want to keep my fingertips. And I know this is going to probably sound funny to you guys, but I'm actually tightening up my stomach muscles as I'm cutting. Um, will you get a six pack from doing this? Probably not. But what it does is it helps ground you in that one little area. I'm just going to add that to that. Now with my onions, I'm just going to make strips. Just like so. Give that a nice little mix. And now that I have any, all, everything in there, like I said, this is not your traditional spicy Cajun andouille sausage, so we're gonna make it spicy. Gonna hit that with a little bit of Louisiana hot sauce. Don't laugh, America, I know you see me use this. A Little bit of slap your mama Cajun season. Don't go slapping nobody's mama though, you guys. It's, it's a saying out there. Give that a nice little mix. All right. So last thing we wanna add is a fresh garlic. We're just gonna slice that up. Always add in the garlic last. You want that garlic to be nice and fresh and not all burnt up. So once you have the rough, rough slice, we're just gonna do a little bit of a chop. And that's gonna go right into your skillet. Give that a nice little mix. All right. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, get our rice over here that I pre-cooked. Um, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll come right back and we'll put all this together. I'll show you how to put the actual roll together. I'll be right back.
feel like a champion. Offering therapeutic and relaxation services. Live like a champion. Lifestyle consultations are available. Ray Vibe. Schedule your next appointment with Rachel Champion today, located in DePere, Wisconsin. Welcome to Lex Max, your modern African Caribbean one stop shop, offering a variety of African Caribbean foods and ethnic hair and beauty products. Diversify your taste buds and try something new. Come see us at 140 South McCarthy Road in Appleton, Wisconsin. All right, welcome back, America. So as you see, we got a nice saute there. Everything's all, you wanna make sure you don't over saute it because you want a little bit of a crunch to it. They call that al dente. All right, so while that's cooling off, we'll go ahead and get our rice. Now I would definitely recommend if you're gonna use rice, use a rice cooker by all means. It just takes out all the guesswork and cooks it perfect for you. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this rice vinegar and that's gonna help actually make the rice nice and sticky. We're gonna add in a little bit of slap your mama just a little bit, just to say I put some in there, so now I have actual Cajun rice, and then we're just gonna mix that. And make sure that when you're mixing the rice, ancient Chinese secret, they say be nice to the rice. Don't be all aggressive with it, because you're just gonna make it all mushy, and you definitely don't want that. All right. Now that that's all mixed up for you, we'll go ahead and get our roll on. You guys can see how I roll out there. Take our bamboo sheet. And as you see on this nori sheet that we have here, they have those lines. You just want to line that up with the actual bamboo sheet, just like that. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and get your bowl of water. And you're going to definitely use that. That water is going to be your friend. That's going to keep the rice from sticking to your hands. So we're just going to dip your hands right into the water. Go ahead and take some of that rice and add that right to the nori sheet. And for those of you guys that don't know what a nori sheet is, it's basically, it's, it's seaweed. Super healthy for you, super good with, for your heart. That's why a lot of the Orientals out there, they, they seem to live so long eating all that nori sheet. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing down lightly, and as I'm pushing down, I'm kind of spreading it, just like so. Making sure about every couple seconds, you just want to dip your hands in there. And you want to pretty much fill the nori sheet all the way with the rice. Now we're gonna take some of our jambalaya ingredients and then we're just gonna add that right to the front end of it. And whenever you add the ingredients, you always wanna add it into the front so you can get a nice roll. And the only thing we have left, we'll take that crab meat log, set that right there. And I do need a little piece of this cucumber. So I'm just slice that in half, slice that in half. And then I'm not a fan of that little pulp right there, so we're just gonna take the knife and slide it right up underneath there. All right. So what you wanna make sure whenever you're making slices like that is make sure it's the same size as the nori sheet, so we're just gonna do that. And then make a couple of small slices. All right, so now that we got everything all intact, Go ahead and wash your hands up. And, and you guys, when I'm down in Louisiana, the jambalaya is like one of the most staple recipes out there. I know if you're out there, you've had it before, but I can almost guarantee you, you've never had a jambalaya sushi roll. I can't wait till my boys down there in Louisiana see this. They're gonna maybe freak out, but it's all right. It's my show, I do what I want. So very important that you pull the nori sheet all the way to the edge of it, and you just wanna take your two fingers and fold that right over it, just like so. And then what I'm gonna do is with my left hand is just take and grab the actual bamboo sheet and pull back on it, making sure that the roll is nice and tight. The tighter the roll, the better you're gonna be. Pull that over, and then I'm just gonna roll that just a little bit more. Pull back. Just like that. And kinda of keep moving forward. Just like that. So when it gets to the edge, we're just gonna pull that back forward forward and this is what I call the finger lock you just want to take your two fingers just like this spread them apart actually pull that off and you have your actual sushi roll so real quick I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make an inside out sushi roll we're gonna take the rest of that rice and just go ahead and just spread that right over the noise sheet all right so what you want to do is just take your right hand come up underneath that and just flip that just like that so now you have your stuff on the back so we're gonna take our mix once again. Okay. We'll add in that little bit of cucumber. And then we're gonna add in our crab. Remember, just take your thumbs, pull it all the way over, make sure everything is nice and tight. Grab the actual sheet, pull back, 
and then we're just gonna pull forward once again. Flip that around so I have a little bit more room to work with. Pull this back. Take your two fingers, finger lock, spread them apart. And let's finish just like so. All right. So now we'll go ahead and cut them. Um, I'm using a, an eight inch sushi knife. As you see how it has that little bevel right there, that helps keep the sushi from sticking to the knife. And you also wanna take a little bit of water and just run that right across the blade and that's gonna help keep the sushi from sticking to the rice too as well. So when you're cutting these, the first thing that you wanna do is just face it off and actually cut off the edges. And it's a very simple cut. You're gonna cut directly right down the middle and then you're gonna cut that half in half, just like so. And whenever you feel that your blade is getting a little bit dull, just run it across the steel a couple times. And then we're gonna cut those in half. Looking good. So essentially when you're making sushi, anything that goes good with rice, you can make a sushi roll. And what you want to do too is have you a nice little wet rag. You see how it's got all that sticky stuff on there? You want to get that off. Just like that. So we're going to face that off. And we're going to make these just the same way. All right, now we got our sushi all rolled up. Last little quick step we gotta do is go ahead and do our spicy mayo. Um, when I found out about the spicy mayo, what I realized is that it really was just mayo and sriracha, so I'm doing a Cajun version. So I'm doing mayo, a little bit of Louisiana hot sauce, or a lot of Louisiana hot sauce, depending on how spicy you like it. A little bit of slap your mama, or a lot of slap your mama. And then we're just gonna mix that up real nicely. All right, now that that's mixed up, we'll go ahead and cut up a little bit of green onions. Just gonna cut that at an angle for presentation. Last thing we wanna do is just go ahead and put a little bit of ginger right on there for your people. And a nice little dabi of wasabi. And wasabi is definitely optional. It's super peppery. First time I tried this, oh my God, I almost had to go to the hospital. It's extremely spicy. And we're just gonna top that off with a little bit of black sesame seeds. Some of my green onions. Mm -mm -mm. Put a little bit of wasabi peas on there. And then last but not least, some of this Japanese Cajun spicy mayo. Yeah, that's right, I said that and I went there. There you have it, you guys, your jambalaya sushi roll. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll come right back and I'll show you guys how to make a blackened ahi tuna with the balsamic glaze. We'll be right back. What children eat today can have a lasting effect on their overall health. Made with Door County Tart Cherries, Cherry Delights provide a healthy snack and taste delicious. Unlike sugary fruit snacks, these tasty treats are all natural and provide essential nutrients important to growing bodies. Let's help lead the way for our children to make better choices and understand the importance of healthy eating. When they ask for fruit snacks, give them a healthy snack made with real fruit. Cherry Delight Dried Cherries. Creative Sign Company and its highly skilled staff have been producing signs and graphics throughout Wisconsin and nationwide since 1985. Call Creative Sign Company today to find out how Wisconsin's highest rated sign company can help brand your image. All right, welcome back America. Remember I promise you I'm gonna show you how to make that blackened ahi tuna. Uh, it's a little bit of a Cajun twist, that's why I'm using the blackened season, but I'm just gonna make it to a nice, nice medium rare. So traditionally you don't have to use this for sushi, you can just Cook it up and serve it on the side as a plate and be good with that. So the first thing we want to do is get our blackened tuna all nice and seasoned. 
I'm a fan always whenever you season, season high above the product, let it gradually rain on it so you got even distribution. And I know it seems like I'm adding quite a bit of this blackened season, but that's the point. That's the purpose of blackening something. And for those of you guys that know, blackening doesn't mean burnt, just to get that out of the question. And I like it blackened, not because of, you know, I'm just saying, but blackened really does have a little bit of that nice spice to it. And it kind of makes me feel like a soul brother. All right, so you wanna make sure that you get your oil and your skillet uh, nice and hot. I'm using, once again, a healthy avocado oil. Um, I love this oil because it's high in omega-3, omega-6, vitamin B12. Um, what really separates this from olive oil is it has a uh, 520 degree smoke point. Olive oil only has about a 320, so it's gonna wanna burn up on you. And we need this to about 400 degrees. So make sure that that gets nice and hot before you add in the product. So now we're gonna go ahead and add in our blackened ahi tuna. As you guys can see, it's kind of smoking a little bit. That's what you want. That lets you know that that temperature is really up to par. So we're just gonna take that ahi tuna and set that right in there. Just like so. While that's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and get my rice going. Remember, we just wanna add just a little bit of that rice vinegar. Get that nice little mix. And I'm actually gonna add some of the blackened seasoning to the rice, just so it makes sense with the tuna. And remember when you mix that, remember my rule of thumb, be nice to the rice, you guys. Mix it very carefully, very delicately. All right, that's ready to go. So we'll check on our ahi tuna. And you just wanna kinda tell, as you can kinda see how it starts to kinda cook from the bottom up, you wanna leave probably about an inch and a half gap in it and that's gonna let you know that it's nice and rare. So that looks like that's about ready to flip. And as you see, you got that nice blackened sear, that's what you're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that finish cooking. We're gonna take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back, don't you go nowhere. Wisconsin farmers support an 80 plus billion dollar industry that employs more than 400,000 people. Farmers continue to sustain Mother Nature's resources for future generations and create quality relationships with area businesses. Mark Toyota thanks the farmer. Jamar thanks the farmer. Insane Associates thanks the farmer. Central Door Solutions thanks the farmer. Misfit Truck Service thanks the farmer. And we thank you for buying Wisconsin potatoes. Choosing a good cheese takes years of experience. Let Shellsburg Creamery help you pick the best. No cheese hits the shelves without the Shellsburg Creamery stamp of approval. Look for our brand in your favorite store. Ask for it by name. Shellsburg Creamery, the taste of old fashioned goodness. All right, welcome back you guys. Let's go ahead and check on that tuna. Oh yeah. As you can see right there, get on up here close and check that out. Yeah, as you can see how it's nice and blackened. It looks burnt, but trust me, it's not burnt. So please don't burn this, you guys. All right, get our rice going. So I have one of these little fancy gadgets. I know that typical, typical Japanese, they will just do the finger sushi with their fingers, but I'm just gonna take this and actually just stuff it right into these little rolls, these little holes, just like so. And I like using these little gadgets because it just gives me a nice, pretty presentation. Squish that. All right, take that off. And we're just gonna slam that on there. Kind of put my finger right in there to release them. So the reason why I'm doing this nori sushi is it's just basically a little mini version of the rice ball. Um, this way you can kind of enjoy the sushi rice with your side dish instead of putting it all together and eating it in one big bite. So this is definitely the way to go if you want to put it on that upscale on that higher level. So we're just going to take some of those little sheets and just put that right at a slight angle. Remember when you guys are plating this up, presentation is everything. Please don't forget the presentation. That's your chance to shine. That's your chance to show off. Let everybody know what you've been doing in the kitchen all day. 
So now we'll take our tuna, see how rare it is. We wanna cook this to about a mid-rare. You definitely don't wanna overcook it. Um, tuna is super lean, so if you make this well, well, well done, it definitely is not gonna have the same flavor. So I want some nice long strips. So I'm just gonna basically just face that off. And as you guys can see, it's nice and kinda pink in the middle. That lets me know that it's nice and medium. Now what I wanna do is just try and make slices. You don't wanna make them too thick, but then again, you don't want them too thin neither or else they'll just fall apart on you. Then I'm just gonna take those and just kinda roll them up. And do you have to roll these up and do these like this? No, you don't. You can just pretty much just slice it in half and you can either have them cut it themselves or you can cut it themselves. But like I said, presentation is everything. You always wanna give that good presentation. People eat with their eyes. So if you give a bad presentation, they're gonna make up in their mind that this is not gonna be so good and you definitely don't want that when you're striving for perfection. So now what I wanna do is I wanna create just a little bit more of a garnish. So I'm gonna do a quick tomato rolls. I'm using a tomato peeler with roses. You just wanna start at the bottom of the tomato and kinda of work your way around. I'm using a Roma tomato because the skin on it is super stiff. You definitely don't wanna use a soft tomato. It'll just rip on you right away. Uh, last season I taught, taught Amon Green, uh, Green Bay Packer, how to make a tomato rolls and he did actually did really, really good. I told him when Valentine Day comes around, forget the $20, $30 rose bouquet, make your wife a tomato rose and tell her it's from the heart, you know? So now that I have that, I'm just gonna just roll that up, just like so. Once I get about halfway, I'm just gonna take it, pick it up, wrap my hands around it, using my thumb and my index finger, and that little base is actually at the bottom. We're just gonna put that right on there, kind of manipulate it a little bit, make it look kind of as much like a rose as possible. All right, so the last thing you wanna do is make a little bit of garnish. So what I did is I took the ends of those green onions and you just take your little knife and all you wanna do is just make little slices, making sure you're not slicing all the way through the actual green onion. And this will actually open up like a green onion blossom. And then what you wanna do is just soak these in a bowl of ice water for about 20 minutes. And when you do that, they actually come out just like that. Nice little blossom. And then all I'm gonna do is just stick those right smack dead into the middle of those little rice balls. The thinner you slice it, the more little leaves that you got, and they just open up really, really nice for presentation. A very cool way to use your leftovers and not throw it away, because traditionally I would just throw that away. And then the last thing we wanna do to top that off is I took some blackberry balsamic vinegar and I just cooked that down just a little bit. Um, a lot of times when you get vinegar, it's really, really thin, but as long as you keep cooking it, it actually reduces and all the water evaporates, so you have a nice, thick balsamic glaze. And you can play around with it. You don't have to do blackberry, you can do raspberry, you can do just regular balsamic. And we're just gonna drizzle that over the ahi tuna just like that. So my vision is because the ahi tuna is nice and spicy from the blackened, and then the balsamic is nice and sweet. It kind of gives you that sweet and spicy taste. I guarantee you go down to Louisiana, you ain't gonna find too many people that look like me making this type of sushi, I guarantee you. So the last thing we're gonna do is just take a little bit of those green onions. and we're just gonna top that off and just kind of spread that around just like that. And because I have a little bit of these wasabi peas that I love so much, I'm actually just gonna sprinkle those over there. All right. And there you have it, your southern blackened ahi tuna with a blackberry balsamic glaze with little bitty nori sushi rices just for you, you guys. I know I'm smiling a lot, but someone's telling me I need to smile more. I guess you guys know who that might be. So that's our show, you guys. We'll see you next week. Hope you can tune in. Take care. Today's show is brought to you by Schulzberg Creamery, Glorious Malone's Fine Sausage, Cherry Delight of Country Ovens, Tundraland Home Improvement, Cooking Like a Champion is produced by Creative Edge Productions.
Chef Champion here to take you on another culinary journey. Whether you want to cook like a champion or just have a champion cook for you, Chef Champion LLC is your one-stop shop to culinary goodness. We offer a variety of services like private dinners in your home, professional cooking classes, motivational speaking, recipe development, and more. Need your brand promoted? What better way than to have a champion represent your brand right here on my show? Hire me today for your personal Chef Champion culinary experience.